What's good y'all, it's your boy Casey Notes. Today we'll be going through a mixing process. I'll be mixing a trap type beat and I'll show you the basis and essential steps of creating a clean mix. So let's go ahead and do that. And I miss everything I'm gonna be showing you here in this video. Make sure to use your ears. Listening is probably the most important thing when mixing. In terms of mixing, there's generally two leveling approaches, which is called the top down. Which is as it sounds, you start from the top and you bring each element down until you achieve the cohesion you want. But there's also the bottom to top, bottom up mixing, sorry, which is the one we'll be using today. We bring each important element up first until you create the cohesion and the sound that you want. So let's start by just taking a listen to the beat mixing. So the overall sound of this beat so far is not too bad. I do a lot of leveling when I'm making the beat as well. So let's just take a listen. We'll clean up a little more later. So what I usually start with is the low end, probably the 808 or kick, depending on importance and what you want prominent in the beat. But the low end is always usually the part that carries a lot of power, punch, so you wanna start there most of the time. So I'm gonna bring all these faders down, mute the melody, so I'm just starting with the drums, load on some kind of metering plugin. at a couple of things including the VU and where it's peaking at I want it to peak around negative 4.5 or negative 5 so later on when I add my kick I want my kick to be peaking around negative 3 just as a specific basis of me starting and my style and mixing a little bit hotter in terms of this beat and beats trap beats so that's my goal and a beginner mistake that happens all the time is that you look at the fader level make sure you look at the volume and not the fader level so I'm just gonna now bring the kick, and as I said, I'm just gonna put it up to negative three dB. And I'm also gonna EQ out about the 10 hertz range because it's not helping the kick, it's just taking out a lot of energy. So let's just take that out with the built-in EQ. Now we can go ahead and bring in the clap. I'm gonna keep my clap within a three dB, four dB range of my 808 or the element around the kick or 808 just because it has to carry a lot of energy as well. So I have my kick the loudest, 808 second, now the clap. And now the next thing I'm always gonna bring in is the hi-hats, just a little lower than the clap because it also carries a lot of energy. So it's like a pyramid with the most important element at the top and you just keep going down. And I like to pan my hi-hats and a secondary snare if I have. Just pan my hi-hats to drummer's perspective, which is to the left. And then my snare perks, whatever I add, a little to the right. Oh, you want to bring in the lead element for the melody and you want to make it so it's in a relationship with the drums you don't want it too loud but you don't want it too quiet then i'll use the built-in eq to take out some of the low end from the melody so it's not clashing with the low end in the drums element 
so that it serves its purpose, it's audible, and it fits the right pocket in terms of level. And another thing you might want to do, especially with melodies a lot, is pan certain elements because they can occupy the same frequency range. So I'll just separate the secondary and the tertiary elements so they're not competing for the same space. That's the general starting balance. This doesn't mean you won't come back and tweak certain things in the end, but that's just a general start. So next I have an EQ loaded up on the main melody. I'm just gonna go ahead and take out some of this low end. It always clears some more space for the drums, which occupy the most of the low end and the energy. And I can also boost a little bit of the harmonic content. If you know the key of the stuff you played in, you can boost a little bit of the harmonics. Now I got my secondary element, I'm also going to remove some of this low end and I'm hearing a little bit of rumble that I'm probably going to remove, just got to notch this out as well as just overall blend it with the main one so it fits a little better together and then just remove a little bit of this high end. And then for the next element, you want to make it prominent enough that it's not overbearing, but it has its own space. So a lot of times what you have to do, especially with vocal chops, once you're ready to take out the low and high end, you have to do some pocket EQ. So what you're going to do is find the frequency of that chop or whatever and try to make it as prominent as possible. But make sure it's not overbearing in a 1 to 3k range because if someone's rapping on it, that's where the vocal presence is going to sit. So we're just going to boost that with a 29% Q and we're just gonna go back to the main element and do the inverse of that so we're gonna go to that same frequency or to the same Q and just notch out in the inverse so that it creates a little space remember it's panned as well so it's also gonna still have more clarity for that element take out all this extra from the hi-hat that we don't need and I'm just gonna boost some air on it and make it a little more crispy so I'm gonna push that up and once I'm boosting I always use this game match and pull this metering down so that it's not louder so now if we're talking in terms of low end you're also gonna have to do some pocket EQ so I'm gonna go to the 808 load up an EQ and I'm probably, you gotta choose which one you want to have the bass or the punch so right now I'm boosting the 60 hertz range on the 808 for more of that bassy feel and taking out a little bit of the punch around this frequency range. Then I'm going to the kick and once again do the inverse. Boost around this punchy and remove some of the bassy parts. you can get buried in terms of the mix so what you can do is also boost a lot of the high end but make sure you always game match a little bit and that can make more presence to the kick and make it a little more noticeable that's pretty much the general mix we're gonna head over to the master bus add a little chain to enhance a little bit of elements. So first I'm gonna look, go ahead and load on Maximus. And what I wanna achieve with this is a little more width and a little more of the mid range accentuated. So what I'm gonna do is turn the compressor off for all except the mid. And what we're gonna do is upward compress the mid range slightly. 
downward compression is used to control peaks, also known as taming I guess. You can say upward compression accentuates those peaks and makes the louder parts even louder, which can create a little more aggression, which is what I'm going for in this scenario. So that's what I use maximums for. I'm also going to go ahead and improve the stereo separation for the mid range. So I'm just going to use this little knob, notch it back, just to improve a little bit of length. Go to the high end, do the same thing. This is just gonna make the track a little more stereo. So now I'm just gonna load up the SSL bus compressor, which is famous for this glue, and that's what I'm gonna use it for, just to glue everything together. just a tiny bit. And there's a lot more you can do. Just go ahead and throw a soft clipper at the end of my chain and lower the threshold so it's just peaking at negative one. You can do a lot more on your mastering chain. This is a simple beat. I don't want to make it too complicated, but this is just a general idea of how you can mix up a beat and just get a clean sound. Make sure you leave a like comment, subscribe, there's obviously a lot more coming, sorry for not dropping the kit last week, but trust me, I got y'all, don't even worry about it.